All right, good morning, folks. It's Nick Mobauer here with Ben and Nick's, and uh, I'll be brief, but basically what I decided to do this morning. So last week we had two inches of rain, and what happened was our river got really muddy. I was gonna try for smallmouth this weekend, but our river got pretty muddied up, and I like to fish it with a little more clarity. But since it was muddy, I had to change my plans. And what I decided to do was I came out here to this pond yesterday with my dog, walking my dog, and I noticed how clear it was. And this pond is generally really clear, but it was super clear. And I thought, you know what? It's gonna be really windy tomorrow. I mean, it's 6 a.m. and the wind's already 16 miles an hour. So I'm out here, it's protected. And um, I thought maybe I'd just try to catch some bluegill this morning or some bass maybe, but my primary species out here is gonna be bluegill. So I thought I'd go old school good old-fashioned wire hook, a little chunk of night crawler, and a slip bobber. So you can see fish are suspended above the weeds. There's a lot of weeds in this pond, which is kind of nice because a lot of our ponds around here don't have aquatic vegetation. So that's good habitat for, for bluegill and bass. So I'm just gonna toss around in here and see if I can't find a few panfish this morning. So wish me luck, and hopefully we'll catch a few. We got something ticking it there. Oh, there we go guys, how oh, he got off. It's really important to have a really small hook so that they can get that in their mouth. They have to be able to take down that night crawler and just chow. So, Classic bluegill behavior. Got the worm, and I didn't get the fish, but we'll throw another little piece on there. Maybe I should downsize a little bit and just get the smallest piece on there so that the bluegill can inhale my night crawler and my hook. Should probably get my pliers out because sometimes they really get it down there. While I'm at it, I'm gonna throw another piece of split shot on here. That way that bobber can set itself up a little faster. I threw another little split shot on there. I have it hanging about two feet down. Like I said, there's weeds in here suspended up pretty high, so that worm should be dangling just above the weed line, and that was really fast. That might even be a bass, I'm not sure. Smashed it though. Oh, we got a little gill here. <laughs> There's nothing more fun. Boy, look at that plump girl. <laughs> that is a female ready to ready to spawn right there. Chunker. Look at that. That is just a plump girl. Right there. We'll get her back. So she can do her thing. And get it back out there. Catch a couple more bluegill. I think it's going to be a fun morning. There's nothing more fun than watching that bobber go down. That is just fun. Look at that guys, that easy. It doesn't get any more simple than that folks. Another female I think, yep. Oh boy, that's fun. That little hook just goes right down their little mouth. I mean, them bluegill have really small mouths, so you gotta have a small hook to get in there. Well, this might be a pretty redundant morning. And you know, another reason why I'm using a night crawler, well, you could say that, you know, it's pretty obvious that bluegill will destroy a worm. But the clarity out here is just super good, so those fish can just see me dangling that night crawler out there for just probably 10 feet away a bluegill can see that worm rolling around in the water so high visibility they're gonna see that no problem
And there must just be a school of them out there because this is just every cast, guys. Take the kids out. Good times. Sometimes it's fun to just take all the, serious, the seriousness of fishing and just put it on the wayside and just enjoy some simple fishing. And the reason why I decided to keep today simple is because of the wind. I was like, I just want to enjoy it. I want to fight the wind, looking for a good spot. It's pretty protected here. And I can just enjoy fishing. See all those boils there are bluegill over here. Crushing. Now if you're looking for a good lake for bluegill, I've read, I watched this documentary about bluegill fishing in Minnesota. Look at this one. It's a pretty nice bluegill. Anyways, I'll show this one to you. That is a nice bluegill, guys. Look at that feller. Two hands, you know, right there. Right here, a little public spot in Story County, Iowa. Big bluegills. So much fun. Anyways, if you're looking for bluegill, I, I saw this documentary and I, I'd have to say it kind of holds up to my experiences too, but they say find a, find a pond that is really high in, uh, I don't know, vegetation, silty ponds. Not silty as in like, not good clarity, but silty and like muddy bottoms, you know, very nutrient ponds high nutrient ponds. So a lot of the places I fish are old sand quarries and all sandy bottom. There's no aquatic vegetation and I just don't catch the bluegill. Like I don't get the size. I catch the bluegill but I don't have the size that I get in these nutrient rich ponds. You know it just it does seem I feel like there's some merit to it for sure. So find those nutrient rich ponds high in aquatic vegetation just scan around you'll find those bluegills hanging out I guarantee it might take you a couple couple tries to find the right pond but once you find one you can count on it always being probably pretty good I think something that's really important about slip bobbering is for bluegill or crappie I like to go with the most slender or smallest bobbers I can it, while it still works because you don't want those fish to feel the tension of that bobber being pulled down into the water column. Works really well. Just having a small bobber, they just don't feel that resistance and they're more inclined to strike. You know, days like this where they're just super aggressive, it might not matter as much, but when they're more finicky, it definitely can make a difference. This feels like a pretty decent bluegill, if it's a bluegill. But they can make a big difference, you know, when they're in a in a mood. Well, not that big, just a hard fighting little fella. So yeah, just having a small bobber works great for little little panfish. They just can't feel the difference. Since I just realized that I did this wrong, I was so excited to fish this morning. So the bead should be on the other side of this because it works as a stopper for the slip bobber and I have it backwards. My knot's thick enough to where it doesn't matter but my bead now serves no purpose because I put it on wrong. So I'm gonna have to fix that. I'll catch one more right there. Three casts in a row I think. They're just all in here and the water's so clear they can just see that bait for miles. It goes down, drops in the water column, their lateral line probably feels it and then they see it and they just come in and crush it. So we'll take him off, get resituated, and be back in a minute. Look at him in that beautiful light. You can't beat that, you know, the sun's rising. Might have some storms to the north, but here it's peaceful. I don't think we're supposed to get any rain, but it's just a beautiful morning and I'm just grateful to be out. Look at that. I believe those are all fish schooled up right there, just above the weeds, so. We're on them and we're having a 
Fun morning catching some panfish. So much fun. All right, folks, so I'm just gonna give you a little update on what's going on this morning. Um, hammered those bluegill, it was so fun. And But you know, of course, we have to have some weather here this morning. And that storm is kind of slowly making its way through. It's actually really frustrating because we're right on the edge of it. It's basically sunny in the west and to the east we got the storm, but there's little, little pop-up cells everywhere. And you know, it's just probably better to be safe than sorry. So I loaded up my kayak and I decided to uh, go somewhere else. I mean, I just hammered those bluegills. So I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm content with that. I'm not, I'm gonna call it a day here, see if any else, any sort of other excitement can happen. The weather conditions being weird makes me wanna kinda of fish some other spots because I'm just like, maybe they'll have the fish in some kind of weird behavior and something special might happen or quite the opposite, that maybe nothing will happen. But um, I'm out at some pits here. I'm just kinda of waiting for the weather to, you know, make up its mind about what it wants to do. And then I'm going to walk my way back to this old quarry and uh, see if I can catch some crappie. And it's the same one I've been fishing this year. Um, but yeah, hold tight. We're going to jump on there, throw a plastic minnow on, lose the uh, slip bobber, and see if we can't catch some crappie. So, And uh, there's some big lightning bolts just right over there to the east. So yeah, it's probably just best I'm off the water right now in the meantime. That's the smart decision. So yeah, hang tight. We'll get over there once the storm passes and we'll see if we can catch some crappie. So we'll have a bluegill crappie morning hopefully. So hang tight and I'll see you in a second. Hey, oh, folks, look at there. I was wondering if they were done spawning. I think they might be in this body of water. There we go, a crappie. Way smaller than them bluegill. But you know, what I always say is it just takes that one, that one beast. So, like I mentioned, I switched out the slip bobber for a one inch Berkeley gulp minnow and I just have a white jig head on there uh, 132nd ounce now I'm just rolling it back to me real slow you know it's what you do for crappie and we're just picking off individuals that was my first one water clarity here is still pretty decent so that's good and I'm just throwing it into that wood Crappie love wood. There's another one. Oh, popped off. Just look for that wood in your bodies of water. I wasn't sure if they'd still be here. I thought maybe they'd be done. But like I said, there's still a couple hanging out in that thick wood. There's a little better one, guys. That's an edible one. It's probably an eight, nine incher. I've been waiting to stick a good one to tell you guys what I'm doing. So if there's not wood present and I'm just fishing the uh, shoreline, I'm, I'm trying to hit that jig head about on the shore. I'm almost landing that thing on land. So there he is. That fish was probably in less than a foot of water. And uh, like I said, I'll show you guys what I'm doing. But like I said, if there's not wood present, I'm trying to land this jig and minnow about on land. Like I am on right there. I'm a foot away from shore there. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just slowly reeling it back to me. 
just to crawl. Those fish are coming up and smacking it. Most of them are hitting within five feet of shore. Just barely. Barely in any water. These fish are in very skinny water right now. See when there's when there's wood and stuff, then you can start throwing it out a little further. But like when there's no wood, just right by shore, there's another one. That was probably in a foot or two of water. Very shallow. Spring spawn. And that water clarity isn't very good. If it's stained, those fish will get up in some really shallow water if they feel like they're hidden enough. Try to land it right in there. That's probably that's even too far away from shore. I mean, not to say I won't get bit, but they are in very, very, very skinny water. There's one. Feels like a decent fish. Find some larger ones over here. There's a better one. Another decent one there. On that one inch minnow. Probably less than three feet of water, that fella. Three feet or less. That's a nice crappie right there. That's more kind of what I'm after, you know. Decent fish there. Let him go, let him get bigger. Nice thing about, if there's any nice thing about catching these small crappies and having a small lure is you're entertained in between that bigger bite that you're looking for. Just always getting bites. There's one. That feels like a better fish too. Ah. They're popping off really easily. I don't know what the deal is, but it's hard to keep them on today. I don't know if it's my small hook or what. There it is. I think it might be the same one. Keep coming back. Look at this one. This is a good one too. better fish there that's a better fish see these are those white crappie I was talking about I said I'm used to white ones white ones are bigger in here there we go another nice one there that's an eater shallow 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 guys crushing that minnow really shallow There's a nice fish, guys. Another nice one here. Better. Yoink. Just a lot of sorting, guys. That's all it is. But, you know, if you're patient, pull 300 little ones out, and every now and then you'll get the better one. Well. And he isn't big by any means, but... You can't really complain either. Let's see if I can find my darn. I don't even know where it is. There we go, that helped. We'll keep the scissors out if that's going to be the case. We're winding down here though, but there's another beautiful white crappie with its colors. I don't know, that's probably three or four that have been of decent size, but if I sat out here all day, I could definitely pull off getting a stringer of them. So yeah, I mean, there's nothing to it. There's really no instruction to give. Just find good cover, find shoreline with a lot of trespass and trees and limbs and stuff. Pitch a small jig and minnow out there and just sort through them. I mean, anything can get their mouth around an inch long gulp minnow, so you're bound to catch something.
All right, folks, I'm gonna give this maybe two or three more casts and then I'm gonna wrap it up for the day. It's been a heck of a panfish morning. Big gills, tons of dinky crappie, tons of dinky bluegill, and some big crappie, or, you know, decent sized crappie. Not, not big, but not bad at all. So, yeah, I mean, what's there to say other than bluegill love, you know, worms and crappie love minnows. Like, that's kind of what it comes down to. Um, just using that slip bobber, varying my depths for those bluegill this morning in that ultra clear water, they had no problem finding that um, night crawler bouncing up and down and being jigged. And then we came down here and had ourselves a good old crappie fest. A lot of fun, guys. Came down to the wood here. Just pulled up some crappie. That's all there is to it. Go find them. And uh, just enjoy yourself, you know. Just takes a little bit of practice. And you'll get into them. There's another one. That's all there is to it. So a little swim minnow. And you'll be catching crappie like a pro. Minus the size. <laughs> Have a good one, guys.